All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, Friday at the end of a conference, I'm going to trick you all into looking at some code. Um, I am Trey Pendragon. I work for Princeton University Library. Uh, and we're going to talk about background jobs. Oh, and I'm going to click the thing appropriately. So here's sort of what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to talk about what a background job is and why you might use them. Then I'm going to share how you might use them in a pretty complex use case of ingesting a whole book because life is complicated uh, and where Sidekick Pro might fit into that process. And then I'll do a little wrap up and spoiler alert, wrap up is one slide that says questions. Uh, so what is a background job? Well. Uh, in summary, it is a job that happens in the background. So <laughs> uh, it is, to show an example here, it's in this little screenshot. You might hit this button that says upload files from server, and you might pick a bunch of files, and then you hit OK. And the important piece is that the user will immediately get redirected with some sort of message that will pop up and say, hey, I'm working on it. Uh, and the server in the background will distribute work to a variety of backend processes that will actually do that stuff. So why might you want to do this? Uh, some really common examples are creating derivatives, sending an email, uh, doing bulk ingest, changing properties, preserving items and re-indexing. And I would say all of those are cases where it's really like how long it takes for that thing to happen determines whether or not you want to put that thing in the background. Uh, but another use case is just anytime you want to do any sort of parallelization in Ruby, this is like splitting a process up across multiple backend servers is a way to get things done faster. Uh, largely because Ruby just doesn't come with like some sort of way to run stuff simultaneously and across servers. So using this worker mechanism is the standard way of doing it. All right, great. Now I know what a background job is. What is my software actually going to look like? Uh, so Rails now very helpfully has active job, uh, has had it for a while. Several of you have probably used it. Uh, it's built into most repositories and I don't think a repository would work without one. Uh, the concept is I've got like a standard API that have a variety of backends that perform slightly differently, um, but they all sort of point to different kinds of backends. Uh, some common ones are Sidekick, which is a thread-based solution, which persists to Redis. A Rescue, which is very similar to Sidekick, but uses workers instead of threads. Uh, so it's like forks new processes for every job. Uh, also stores to Redis. There's Sneakers, which uses RabbitMQ, which is the real like message queue. Uh, instead of just the key value store that's Redis. So you get things like message acknowledgments, which are nice, uh, but I'm not going to talk about here today. There's delayed job, which is nice because it just uses active records. So it's really easy to install. And a new one that I hadn't known about until prepping for this is good job, uh, which just uses Postgres to persist to and seems to be a project in 2020. Uh, I will say I think Sidekick and Rescue is still the most popular, and Sidekick is recommended by the Hyrax documentation and is in the title of this talk. So that's what we're going to be talking about. All right, I promise code. So here's an example of sort of what a Sidekick job will look like. Um, this is sort of a condensed example, but doesn't miss any, like this is, I condensed it in such a way that I refactored in a way that I'll probably go and do for real. But the use case here is say I delete a parent that has like 6,000 children uh, because it's a book with 6,000 pages. If that user had to wait for 6,000 pages to get deleted and those things to get deleted off a of disk and all the messages to send, 
uh, they'd be sitting there forever. So instead, we queue up these background jobs, uh, one per file set, and it looks like this. You just pull that. Uh, there's a bunch of Valkyrie stuff here. Don't really worry about it. Uh, but you just pull that thing out, and you delete it. And there's this little rescue for if that object didn't, ex didn't exist in the first place, and you log a message. Um, so you might have expected me to sort of gloss over this weird rescue thing. Uh, I would like to say that it is definitely weird. Uh, the, you'll see this a lot in Sidekick code. Sidekick is very nice, uh, unlike some other backends for active job in that if your job throws an error, it will retry ex with an exponential back off and give up eventually, but eventually is like days later. Um, this is really helpful for if like solar goes down or your server goes down or some external service is broken uh, or your stuff just isn't in the right state, it'll error. Um, this is a problem for me because I get honey badger errors when these jobs break and I don't want to see that email. Uh, so there are times when a job will just never succeed. So if like this object isn't just going to sporadically appear if it turned out it was gone. So rescue it uh, so that it, the job doesn't error and then log a message so that RuboCop doesn't yell at me, to be honest. All right, we're now pros at writing background jobs. So let's talk about what Let's talk about our complicated use case. So this is a super common use case at Princeton and probably a pretty common use case at other institutions, which is I need to ingest a book. Uh, so let's say I have a 500 page book represented by 500 TIFFs on a server somewhere. I wanna put those images on a server, hit a button, and eventually it'll tell me that it's done somehow. Um, so I put all of those files uh, on an appropriate server location. I put in, in Figgy, we put in like a, a metadata ID. That's like, this is where you should import metadata from. Here's the visibility, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get this nice little button that says save and ingest. Um, obviously, if they had to wait for the whole ingest to be done before their browser returned, uh, I'd get a bunch of messages in Slack and I, don't, I get enough of those. So instead, they'll just immediately get a message that says, okay, I'm working on it. And then it'll distribute to a whole suite of background threads uh, on a variety of servers. So here's the strategy. Uh, they hit the button. It will create the parent record. This is like the book. And it'll queue up an ingest job. Uh, pointed at like the directory where all of those files that it's going to ingest to are, uh, and then it'll redirect the user. That ingest job is going to copy 500 files to the repository. Uh, it's going to create 500 file sets, and it's going to take a while. If I were in your shoes, I expect this is the time when you would say something like, Trey, you just promised that if I wanted to parallelize things, I would want to use these background jobs. Why are you doing all this in one job? Uh, the issue here is that it's really important that those files show up in the same order, uh, and which is a lot easier to do if things are sequential, uh, which is really easy to do if they're all in one job. So page six on the file system really super needs to be the sixth member in order on the book. If I wanted to parallelize that, I would need some sort of like magical system that would like distribute across a cluster of machines and return some arbitrary return value for the file sets that it created and finished, and then be able to combine those in order. We're not talking about magic today. So there is, after those ingest jobs happen, there are 500 characterization jobs that queue up. This adds technical metadata to every file set. 
uh, things like checksums or MIME type or other technical metadata. Uh, each of those characterization jobs finishes and queues up a derivative job that creates a derivative, probably for your triple I viewer or something like that to work. Or I don't know, if you have 500 audio files, then maybe it's HLS partials. Um, it's not really important. It runs some sort of derivative process. This process is probably, this should be super similar to what's in Hyrax and is basically exactly the thing that happens in our digital repository as well. All right, you did it. Good job. Everything shows up. Um, it works for like a long time, probably. Uh, and But eventually a couple of things are going to go wrong. Uh, so the first thing uh, is a pretty important thing. If you kill that sidekick process or your operating system like runs out of memory and decides that killing the sidekick process would be a really good way to get it back, uh, that job is gone. And you will never know, uh, except for maybe someday, years in the future, somebody will say, you know, page 36 is gone. Or they'll be like, I was pretty sure I ingested this book. Uh, it's, it's really sad when something like that happens. And these ingest jobs are super important to run. So how do I fix it? This is usually when institution goes and looks at Sidekick Pro, either because of some sort of presentation for this or because Sidekick is really good at advertising the fact that they fixed this uh, via their Pro product. So the process for implementing this is I hit a button, I give them some money. Uh, I add this little chunk of code to an initializer somewhere and I restart my server and my sidekick panel, which I'm not going to show too much, but I probably should have, is going to have these little reliable ticks on the side. Uh, that means you won't lose jobs anymore. Done. All right. So now one of two things has happened. Either you don't have that problem anymore, or you decided you don't $1,000 want one of your books to ingest. Uh, life is great. Well, uh, except for, for one, one little problem, uh, which is that we forgot a requirement. And that is, I need to know when this thing is done ingesting. There's now 1,001 jobs before my thing's done, even more if I add preservation. How do I know that they're all done? So if you look at this use case and you're used to writing your own software, you'll probably go through a thought process that looks like this, which is maybe I can keep track of the status of the jobs or at the end of every job completion, maybe I'm going to like update some sort of like notifier that's like, oh, I've done 506 of these. Or, and then if I add like a preservation step to the end or something like that, then I guess I'll update that process or maybe I'll wrap it all up in some sort of manager object or maybe i'll just like hide in a corner and like forget that this is a thing so that i can be happy with my life um but let's say i did all of the above and now i have race conditions like two things updated at the same time and they both check and like they neither of them think that they're the last one so nobody updates so it never notifies anybody does that mean i need some sort of locking like Locks are hard. How do I know what kind of lock I need? I put a lock in and now my database is stalled. You know, maybe you just don't need to know. Maybe you just don't put this feature in. Maybe it's fine. Just go check the web page sometimes. Uh, so long story short, just don't do this to yourself. It's a lot. Uh, you might figure it out, but I promise every other developer who works on it will hate it and uh, hopefully won't get blame you for it. So instead, let's be happy instead. So I want to talk about batches. Uh, so Sidekick Pro has this feature that lets you group jobs together. And when all of the jobs in a given batch are done, uh, it can fire a callback. Batches can be nested, uh, which means that when one batch finishes, uh, it can be like, oh, 
I have more stuff to do. Don't fire your callback yet. Please queue this job and wait for this job to be done. Um, you get a nice little thing, like a nice little notifier here that will tell you sort of how much stuff you have to do for your batches. Um, and it kind of handles all of that locking business locked to job process instead of um, like, instead of Ruby and in your Postgres database, it stores it in Redis where your jobs are tracked. Um, there's, here's a link to the documentation. Um, I'm just gonna say that it can handle pretty much any workflow you could possibly imagine. And let's look at some more code. Um, I will say at first that we are not doing this yet in our repository. We're using batches in our, for indexing in our catalog, um, but this is sort of how I imagine this would work. So first thing, you spin up a batch, you tell it what your callback is going to be. In this case, it's ingest manager ingested, and you give it some parameters to pass uh, at the end of that callback. And then you add the jobs that are part of it. Um, our ingested thing just like marks that resource as you're not ingesting anymore. Uh, the ingest job is pretty simple. Uh, I've commented out all of the exciting parts. And instead, just for every file set that you end up creating, queue up a job. Uh, the job sort of knows what batch it's been spawned from and queue up a characterization job. Uh, characterization job looks the exact same thing. It knows which batch it's a part of and it can queue up jobs within it. And that batch will not complete until every job that has been queued within it has been successfully done and the callback succeeds. Um, importantly, if you want to add processes, you just add processes to the end of this the same way you would normally. And as long as you make sure that they're added to that batch, it will just take care of knowing when to fire that callback appropriately. All right, I want to talk a couple of times about or a little bit about some other Sidekick Pro features. Uh, you have the ability to pause queues, which might be important if you're, for instance, ingesting a book for six hours, uh, then you might want to like wait to finish before deploying. Like it might be safe to run that job again, but you'll probably end up with files like copied somewhere and you don't want to have to pay for that. Uh, so you can pause the queue and you can, you can deploy when it's empty to make sure that that queue doesn't get picked up by anything else. And there's an API for that. So you could even do that as part of your deploy process if you wanted. Uh, it pushes metrics. Uh, you can add expire times for jobs if you have jobs that like have been queued for a long time, but it doesn't make sense for them to run if it's been queued for a day or something, right? Like if I do a daily report, I probably don't want a daily report if it runs tomorrow. Um, and there are a couple of API improvements that I'm not, I'm just not gonna get into. So what's the catch? The catch is if you wanna use batches, uh, you don't get to use active job. It's a pretty big catch. Uh, if you have your own repository, uh, migrating these are super easy. All you do is get rid of the inheritance and include sidekick worker and your method is named the same thing. And you have to make sure that you're passing basic arguments, mostly strings uh, as arguments. So if you're passing around objects, you got to stop doing that. Um, if you have a Valkyrie application, you're probably stopping doing that anyways. Uh, this example is one of our actual ones in real production. The other thing is I'm not really sure how you would do this in Hyrax. Not everybody's going to pay for Sidekick Pro um, and you can't use active job. It's kind of a bummer. I don't have a great solution for you. I'm really sorry. Oh, and this is our my famous wrap up slide. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Thanks, Trey. I'm going to give people a minute to put in their questions.
Okay, we have, is there a way to check or validate the results of ingesting a big book? Yeah, so batches uh, come with an eight. So, okay, there are a couple of things. Um, the callbacks make it easy to do a manager if you want to keep track of it, like on the resource, you don't have to really worry about uh, race conditions because there's a very clear beginning and end point. Um, alternatively, batches do have, like they're queryable. There's an API for it. You can pull their status out. Um, so you could do that instead. In the one case where we've implemented this, we ended up doing a manager because we had to keep track of, we had to keep more track than we could do just as properties on the batch. All right, another question. Have you tried Factory, F-A-K-T-O-R-Y? Uh, I believe this is, uh, no, I have, I have not. Uh, my understanding is that that's the Sidekick Authors more generic version, um, but I have not tried it. Great, another question. Can you undo a batch job? I, uh, I, I don't understand. Can I undo a batch job? Maybe somebody could, could clarify this for me. Yes, I'll give the <laughs> questioner a minute to, to put that in. Uh, there is a question generally, um, I think for you, Trey, or for for the community to put into Slack, uh, has anybody tried any free queue management tools that are similar? Um, yeah, I don't know. The I, this sort of batch processing thing is pretty hard. My only memory of try, the community trying this in the past is I'm pretty sure. Oh boy, a uh, long time ago, probably 2016 or 17, I seem to have a fuzzy memory of Michael Klein doing a, a Ruby version of keeping track of your jobs. Um, but uh, I have since not heard of anything like that. Okay, and there was a guess at maybe what the other question was, if it was maybe about um, if you make a mistake in your batch and need to undo it, are you aware of anything to do that? Um, there is very good advice in the documentation. Um, and there are, there are callbacks in the batch for like, uh, I've failed, like some of my jobs have failed. Um, so I think you could set up a strategy to handle like I've messed up, but I, you would have to reach into the documentation. I haven't done that myself. Okay. Another question. Um, the questioner says, I may have missed this. Is Sidekick Pro running the jobs remotely? Uh, S-A-A-S. Oh, uh no, so you still, so you spin up Sidekick as a process on some machine that runs your application code. Um, and that process will speak to a shared database, whether that, uh, in the case of Sidekick, it's a shared Redis queue. Okay, and I see another question in, I almost missed in Slack. If we solved this on our own, wouldn't we learn how to solve the problem and avoid spending extra money at potentially multiple institutions? Um, I, good luck. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a hard problem. Um, I don't, I'd be really curious about the cost benefit analysis of that. Um, there are solutions in other languages that provide similar options, uh, but I can't, yeah, I don't know. I, 
be if you pull it off great tell me about it um i'm always happy to save money but it i hope it doesn't cost me more money than it would just to buy a sidekick pro all right, another question. Uh, can you or are you parallel processing at the book level or given you can't at the file level, are you doing anything else to speed processing assuming you have multiple books to do? Uh, can you repeat that for me one more time? Sure, is in the Q and A. Um, are you parallel processing at the book level or given that you mm. can't at the file level, are you doing anything else to speed processing? Um, sure. So the the ingest jobs can be so that top level thing that like goes through and creates all of the files. Those can be queued simultaneously as well. It's just the process of like adding the files to the parent record all happens in one background process rather than one background process that takes a long time rather than like. 500 that happen relatively quickly, but we'll often have multiple books ingesting at the same time, for instance. All right, great. You've generated a whole lot of discussion in the Slack. So I think this has been a